Hello again everyone. So in the uh, last video after fetching and uh, set up our basic structure of our uh, React application, uh, now we need to go ahead and start working on, on our application or to do application. So um, basically what we need to do, we need to get or build a list of to-dos, uh, each to-do uh, will have a functionality, basic functionality. You can delete it and mark it as completed or not completed. Um, then there uh, is a form, a small form beneath it to add your own to-do. So basically it's a small functionality, but uh, kind of cover all or the default uh, basic functionalities in any uh, React application. So um, as I mentioned before, we have the app component, which is the parent uh, component for all the uh, components tree, let's see, let's say. So we have components tree and we have the parent, tree, parent component, which is the app, app component. And inside the app component, we, have, we would have um, children components. And each component in some way, uh, it will has uh, props or components or um, any children components inside it. So basically you can think about your React application as a tree of components. Each component uh, will be rendered inside a parent component. So in our case, we have the app component, which is the parent component for all uh, our uh, application components. Uh, what we need to do first, we need to inside the app, we need to um, start with the, our application. So in our use cases, we need to do's. We need uh, somewhere to store our uh, to do's um, in order to render them inside inside the application. So in order to do that, what we need to have is to create a state so this is um, uh, one of the basic concepts of uh, any react application so basically what is it uh, the state in the in the react application uh, the state is uh, a place let's say it's a variable where you can store your data but uh, what is it what is the difference let's say we have a uh, normal variable called um, whatever let's say it's a state and then this variable has a default value of an array what is the difference between this and between the the state uh, variable or the state where uh, it is like the state of the application what is the differences the differences is that the state of the application basically is a variable uh, each state is a variable defined inside the component, inside the application. But be, we will have the ability to set and mutate, mutate this, uh, this variable. Uh, as you already know, as you already may know, um, in the class components, there, there is not um, it's not directly you can you can edit and set your your state, there's there's something like a uh, workaround. But uh, here, in, uh, after introducing uh, React functional components and um, custom hooks uh, and React hooks, uh, then you, you can uh, use states inside, inside functions. Uh, and with that concept, with the uh, React custom or uh, use state, we will use that in a minute. So in, in a new state uh, uh, hook, then you can set your current state. So basically, let's create a state. To do that, we need to call a use state hook. And how that works, use state is not imported. What we can do right, uh, right here, we can either go ahead and import use state not user 
we can import use state from React, and that will do the job. Or you can import the React object, and from React, you can call the use state hook instead of um, using or importing uh, individually each each uh, each single component or single uh, single hook. Um, we can do that, and we can, it, it doesn't make uh, a lot of differences. Um, but in the bigger applications, it will be much better to just import the parts you need from uh, from uh, from the library from the package you uh, you need to use. So basically, we can go ahead and import use state. This uh, use state hook. Uh, through this hook, we can create the React states. So basically, uh, we we need to create a state variable, and in order to create the variable or the state, you need to have the variable or the state and the set state, which is the method uh, will be used to set the value of the state. So basically, um, let's say that we have a state uh, that's called in our application to-dos. So we have to-dos uh, where we store our to-dos uh, values. And we have set to-dos to set. Uh, it's a method to set our to-dos to -dos value. And here we need to set the default value for each for, for to-dos, for our state. Uh, in our case, it will be an empty array. So basically, to-dos will be an array of objects. Um, but as a default value, it will be an empty empty array. So uh, we have to-dos, the state, and we have a set to-dos to set the state. So where where is the, those to-dos? Where, when, where we can um, get those to-dos? Uh, in normal cases, um, in your in any application, in most of your application, let's say ninety percent of your application, you'll get the data from your database. So you have to do's in your database. So you are making a request to your database, to your API, and the API you are fetching those uh, to do's uh, information from the database, and then you are sending those to do's uh, into your client application or your React application. So in our case, we will not. Um, we are we are just using uh, React. We will not have an API or uh, a database. But we can use something like um, demo da uh, database or not demo the uh, demo API. Those demo or placeholder APIs uh, through that APIs. Uh, those APIs we can fetch like a demo data. Um, a good example, and the example we will use in our case, uh, it's um, a demo, sorry, JSON um, web holder, not a web holder, it's JSON placeholder. JSON placeholder dot type code typecode.com this placeholder or this um, this demo api through this api we can make a calls into this api and fetch some demo data so um, what kind of apis uh, we can use here we can fetch users and we can fetch to do's as you can see here we can fetch like demo posts uh, by calling um, this url slash posts then we can uh, also fetch, fetch comments, fetch uh, photos, users, and also uh, what we are interested in is, is the to-dos. So we need to fetch to-dos. So basically, if we call this URL and then make a get request into this URL slash to-dos, you will get like, I think it's 200, 200 records. Yes, it's 200. So basically, we'll get 200 records of to-dos. And each to-do, as you as you see, each to-do is an object with user ID, 
and ID title and completed to define if it is uh, uh, completed to do or not completed. So basically from in, inside our application, we need to make a call into this URL and fetch those, um, those to do's. So in order to do that inside the application, we need to make a call into uh, into that API. And to be more specific, uh, we need to make a call into this specific URL. Okay, so uh, inside our application, how we can, let's say, how we can make calls. In normal cases, in, um, in the class-based uh, React uh, component, uh, we have um, the React lifecycle methods like uh, component did mount, component did update, and the other other lifecycle uh, lifecycle methods. Those lifecycle methods, um, let's say, we need to fetch the data when the component being mounted or rendered. Um, in this in this case, uh, uh, we call this uh, component did mounted, and inside this um, inside this lifecycle method, we can make a call into the API and fetch this those data. And when we fetch those data, we store that data inside our state, our app state. So uh, in our case, uh, when um, the uh, React hooks being introduced uh, into React. We know we, we now have we can use inside the functional components. We can use uh, something called use effects, and what that do um, use effect basically it's like a life cycle method. So let's go ahead and let's import this use effect. And this use effect method, we can use call this use effect, and basically it's giving a, um, a callback function. Inside this callback function, we can make whatever we want. So basically, um, what this means, it means whenever the component did mount or rendered, it will go ahead and do the logic inside inside use effect. Uh, in our case, we will fetch those data. Uh, and what that means, what this empty array means, it's, it's called a dependency array. So dependency array, uh, we can put inside it like some variables. Uh, what one when those variables or parameters being changed this use effect will change or this what use effect will be triggered again so for example if we have a call into the api being uh, implemented inside inside use effect let's say we are fetching those to dos from the that api so when the component rendered being rendered first time first time it will be uh, go ahead it will go ahead and fetch those data and if we put uh, like an empty array this uh, use effect will be called just one time so once the component did mount this use effect will be called and will never be called again but if we have like no dependency array, this use effect will be called every time the component being rendered. So in, in any case, let's say that to do's or any state in our application being changed, the component will be rendered again. And when the component rendered again, it will call this use effect again. And it will, and in, in a lot of cases, it will cause like an infinite loop and the uh, application will crash. So um, you need to understand the your use cases 
and um, how you can implement those um, life cycle methods, which is the use effect, how you can use effect inside your application, what's your use cases, and how you can manipulate it. So in our case, um, and also I forgot to do, forgot to tell you that if we have something inside use of, uh, inside this array, some variable, let's say, um, something changed in our application, something, let's say, um, um, we are we are calling another API, okay, and that API is uh, returning like uh, loading loading variable. So this loading variable, let's say this variable, and it's false. And I'm just trying to explain the use cases here, uh, the use effect cases. So if we have loading, and this is in some way, it's linked to another API. So we are calling this API and this API returning always false but in one case it returned it returns true so in this case i put loading here and telling the use effect to be triggered once the component being rendered and also once the loading being changed so it will be triggered every time loading being changed this is one of the uh, most important things uh, or the most important um, React life cycles you can use inside your application. It's relevant um, relevant to component did mount in uh, React class based components. I hope that um, that the use case is being cleared right now. I just want to explain how things work and how use effect being worked so in our case we need just to make a call into that url into this into this url and fetch the data inside our application in order to do that we can use something called fetch api but i will keep this into the next video thanks for watching and i will see you next